morning dear friends today we celebrate the feast of Saint Mark the Apostle of Jesus and disciple of Saint Peter in this mass we pray for all those who do God's ministry pray for ministers of God's word around the world pray especially for any who may be sick about this time Pray the intercession of St. Mark to help them find healing, grace, and strength to stay faithful as he was to the ministry of the Lord. I'd also like to pray for all of you. Pray for your families and loved ones. Pray for all those who may be struggling at this time, emotionally, just trying to get by every day. That God may help us maintain some stability amidst this crisis, amidst this chaos. I'd also like to pray for those who have asked prayers at this time, those who are recovering from other forms of diseases, like heart diseases, strokes, cancers, and other ailments, diabetes. May God help them find strength and healing from this sacrament, from this Eucharistic table. And I'll leave us the next 30 minutes to one minute, 30 seconds to one minute to bring our own intentions and place them on the altar of this sacrifice. Yesterday we talked about how in the hands of Jesus things are different. So just lay it on the altar because Jesus is not just the priest, he is the altar, he is the lamb of sacrifice. He is all three. Our opening hymn for today is City of God. We are building the City of God. Awake from your slumber, arise from your sleep. A new day is dawning. For all those who weep, the people in darkness have seen a great light. The Lord of our longing has conquered the night. Let us build the city of God. May our tears be turned into dancing for the Lord, our light and our love has turned the night into day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. My dear friends, we celebrate the Feast of St. Mark, and in this Mass, we pray for all the intentions that you have brought to this altar and the intentions we have mentioned here. Our God is a loving God. Our God hears us. Our God is with us. And so to prepare this, to prepare ourselves to celebrate this Mass in the company of our Lord, let us first purify our own consciences, clean ourselves of our sins, and ask that this sacrifice may be pleasing to God. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners to repentance. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sins. May he bring us to life everlasting. 
Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayers. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who raised up St. Mark, your evangelist, and endowed him with the grace to preach the gospel, grant, we pray, that we may so profit from his teaching as to follow faithfully in the footsteps of Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. My dear friends, our first reading is a reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, clothe yourself with humility in your dealings with one another. For God opposes the proud, but bestows favor on the humble. So humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your worries upon him, because he cares for you. Be sober and vigilant. Your opponent, the devil, is prowling round like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Resist him steadfast in faith, knowing that your brothers and sisters throughout the whole world undergo the same sufferings. The God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory through Christ Jesus, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you after you have suffered a little. To him be dominion forever. Amen. I write you this briefly through Silvanus whom I consider a faithful brother, exhorting you and testifying that this is the true grace of God. Remain firm in it. The chosen one at Babylon sends you greeting, as does Mark, my son. Greet one another with a loving kiss. Peace to all of you who are in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the psalm is, Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. The favors of the Lord I will sing forever. Throughout all generations my mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness. For you have said, my kindness is established forever. In heaven you have confirmed your faithfulness. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. The heavens proclaim your wonders, O Lord. 
and your faithfulness in the assembly of the holy ones. For who in the skies can rank with the Lord? Who is like the Lord among the sons of God? Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Bless the people who know the joyful shout. In the light of your countenance, O Lord, they walk. At your name, they rejoice all day. And through your justice, they are exalted. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We proclaim Christ crucified. He is the power of God and the wisdom. Of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus appeared to the eleven and said to them, Go into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Whoever does not believe will be condemned. These signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak new languages. They will pick up serpents with their hands. And if they drink a deadly thing, it will not harm them. They will lay hands on the sick and the sick will recover. Then the Lord Jesus, after he spoke to them, was taken up into heaven and took his seat at the right hand of God. Then they went forth and preached everywhere, while the Lord walked with them and confirmed the word through accompanying signs. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, I will reflect this morning on the Feast of St. Mark from the first reading. Peter is writing to the church and addressing especially elders. But everyone is an elder in his or her own right because everyone of us baptized is a priest. Yeah, we do have the ministerial priests like us who wear, and who wear this uniform and um, celebrate Mass and do other sacraments, but everyone who is baptized in Christ Jesus is a leader, is an elder, is called to responsibility, is called to holiness, is called to be a witness, is called to demonstrate everything that Peter is writing here. There's so much in this, in this first reading I will not be able to do justice to everything that the Apostle Peter writes. But I'll focus on a few. I'm sure there will be time for me to talk on humility because on its own, it is, it is a whole trap. 
But the apostle said, Cast your worries upon him who cares for you. What a more apt time for you to hear this, for me to hear these words, that there is someone who cares for me. Now, j just try to imagine the feeling you had when you recognized or realized that someone really cared for you. The first moment you realized that how that made you feel. And the apostle is warning us to recognize and in fact to retrieve that feeling because that feeling is true today, tomorrow, forever because there's one who cares for you. I know it's not some of us um, identify or relate one caring for you with one giving you things that you want and that you need indiscriminately. And, and, and so we tend to identify caring with um, if someone cares for me, they do stuff for me. They Now, there are people who care for you, don't just do stuff for you. They help, they train you, they support you to be able to do stuff for yourself. To be able to do things for yourself. To be able to stand for yourself. And, and so, God may not send you a check or send you a, 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 a basket of groceries or send you money or send you anything. But he's done it all. He will put people in your life. He will send you angels. He will send people in your life who will do amazing and wonderful things. Things you never thought possible. Things you never imagined anyone will do. The Lord does that. He cares for you. And, and believe, believe me, before this week runs out, he will send someone to you. Someone you never expected, whether by phone call or somehow, you are going to see that the Lord cares for you. Peter says, cast your worries, cast your worries onto him. And when you read, I think that's Psalm 37, verse 5. It says, cast your, cast your hairs to the Lord. He cares for you. I think that's where Peter was quoting this from. Cast your cares onto the Lord. He cares for you. And the apostle goes on. Says, be sober and vigilant. Now, what does it mean to be sober? For those who have either dealt with some addiction, you know what it means to be sober. To be sober means being in control. Being able to manage some tendencies, not caving to whatever those tendencies or those drives or those desires are. For someone who, who has been struggling with, with alcohol, being sober means being able to manage that urge to drink for at least a certain period of time. You're sober for this period of time. So what the apostle is saying, be, be collected. Be in charge because you, God has given the grace for you to manage whatever is going on right now. So technically, the apostle says, yeah, in this period of quarantine, where most of us, you know, our minds are raising, we, we look like we're losing control. The apostle is saying, yeah, get some control. Because, yeah, a lot of things are happening around you that you don't control. But it says, hey, manage some control. That means control you. Only you can be sober. No, nothing else. Only you can be sober. Only me can be sober. So the apostle says, be sober. But in your being sober, don't forget to be vigilant. See, for the job, for the kind of work we do, we know what that word means. That word means vigilance. So be vigilant at all times. Now, I know the apostle here was referring to spiritual vigilance. Because the enemy, the devil, will use a lot of things to make sure, to, to, to take our minds off our areas of control 
to areas where we don't control just so we can he can create fear anxiety and stress so what apostle is saying he says be sober but be vigilant that means be in control focus on the areas of control don't let the enemy focus you on areas where you don't control areas where you think you are on, 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 on slipping sand that's not your domain there's someone else who cares for you whose domain that is but the devil knows how to turn your mind to those areas just to scare the hell out of you or of me so that person is saying hey no 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 don't listen to what the devil is saying there's someone who cares for you you who will take care of all of those things that you cannot take care of yourself they don't belong on your lane the devil wants to think they belong on your lane because that is the only way to scare the hell out of you. The apostle goes on, he says, your opponent, he calls him your opponent, my opponent, the devil, is prowling round, looking for one thing to throw at you, to distract you. If you have ever played that game, you know, where you they throw stuff at you, almost like barrages of stuff coming at you, and there's no time to even dodge any. You know what the devil is doing? He's fighting hard. I, I, I remember a saying. He said, when things are getting so hard in your life, that means the devil is fighting so hard. And whenever the devil is fighting so hard, he knows exactly what plan the Almighty God has. And he wants to derail that plan in your life. So the devil is fighting, believe it or not. He is fighting. He is trying to throw distractions at you. The apostle is saying, focus. Focus on your lane. The one who cares for you will do the rest. And he says, resist him. Stay fast in faith. Resist him. Don't give him an opportunity. Don't give the devil an opportunity. He knows how to exploit the slightest opening. He has all the tools. To, to exploit the slightest opening. So the Apostle Peter says, be resisting from the beginning, from the onset, and do that in faith, knowing that your brothers and sisters all around the world are undergoing the same thing. I, I, I don't, what I hear from this, as I place what we are dealing with, is that this virus could also be the devil's distraction. But I thank the, the good Lord because the Apostle Paul tells us God will use even what the devil intends for our, our downfall, for evil, that God will use it for our good. So, so if I place this in context, Peter could be saying, that whatever is happening right now is a devil doing this. But I am confident that God who knows how to use what was meant for evil and turn it for our good will turn this situation for your good, for my good, and for the good of all those who will resist the enemy steadfast in our faith. The apostle goes on and says, your brothers everywhere, your sisters everywhere around the world are experiencing what you are experiencing right now. Whether it's anxiety, just name any, any emotion that you're feeling. They're experiencing it too. And he goes on. He says, to, towards the end, he says, I write you this brief, exhorting you and testifying that God and the grace of God is true. The true grace of God is always there for you. So my dear friends, uh, as we, we reflect on all of this, there, there is so much here to reflect on. But on this feast of St. Mark, the apostles, the disciple of St. Peter, you know, he wrote, he was the first to write the Gospels. He wrote not because he was a direct apostle of Jesus, but he became an apostle through Peter, 
because he was the disciple of Peter and was his interpreter because Peter wasn't that educated. Mark was. So Mark was the person who communicated everything that Peter had to say. I believe that the gospel was the account that Peter turned over to him. We pray, dear friends, for all of you today. May God bless you. May God show his power in your life. May God reveal himself to you. May God let you see that in this chaos, there is some semblance of sanity that God is putting in place for you, just for you. Why? Because he cares for you. The Lord be with you. Most gracious God, we just want to thank you for this wonderful day you have given us to celebrate the Feast of St. Mark. We pray through this intercession, O oh God, that the graces we seek today from this altar may be granted to all of your children to meet every need of their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for priests, pray for deacons, Pray for all ministers of other churches and religions that St. Mark may continue to model for us fidelity to the cause. That we may align ourselves with the gospel message of Christ, not all the distractions around us, especially those coming from politics, from economics, from every other thing. We may focus on Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all of you and pray for the intentions you brought to this altar of God's grace and sacrifice. That from this altar, God may reach out and nourish you and bless you and heal those you are praying for at this time. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. I pray for our doctors here at Walter Reed. Pray for our nurses, pray for our healthcare workers, pray for our chaplains who are doing outstanding work. Pray for all those who are risking every day, our police, people in our police department, our military around the world. We pray for our EMS workers, pray for our fire department, that God may bless them for this sacrifice, that God may protect them, and that God may watch over them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. I'd like to pray for all those new mothers, new parents at this time. This would have been some great moment, you know, to have visits and have people make it easy for you. I pray that God may help you alone with your children, that he may protect you, that he may give you the opportunity to celebrate this amazing moment sometime in the future. We pray that you may have God's care, especially over your very, very frail, tender, and young children, that he may keep them safe. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. I pray for all those who have sent intentions, those I have promised to pray for, that God, who knows your needs, may help meet those needs. I pray especially for those who are recovering from their sickness, from strokes, from cancers, that God may help you find total and complete healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now ask our Blessed Mother to pray with us and pray for us as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed are Lord God of all creation, 
For through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, to become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed thy Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. As we venerate the glory of, the glory of St. Mark, we offer you, Lord, the sacrifice of praise and humbly beseech you that your church may always pers persevere in the preaching of the gospel. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For you have built your church to stand firm on apostolic foundations, to be a lasting sign of your holiness on earth, and offer all humanity your heavenly teaching. Therefore now and for ages unending, with all the host of angels, we sing to you with all our hearts, crying out as we are claimed. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gift, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like you do for, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion. The Lord Jesus took bread, giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up to you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have felt us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Timothy Brooklyn, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have placed you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, 
O God Almighty Father, the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us now rise and pray in the words our Lord gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we are with the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, we said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always, and with your spirit. My dear friends, from me to you and your families, may the peace of God that knows no bounds be with you, abide with you, and remain with you now and always. Amen. Lamb of God, you will take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you will take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you will take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Look up, my sisters, look up, my brothers. Look up and behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who has taken away our sins, your sins, my sins. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us now pray for the benefits of spiritual communion. Gracious God, your people all around the world desire so badly to commune with you and to receive your body and your blood physically. But at this time you know they are unable to do so. So whoever is able to look at you to desire you, to want you in their lives. May your blessing be with them in abundance. May your blessing bless them. May your presence, O oh God, in your hearts nourish every grace needed this time and forever. We ask this through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that what we have received from your altar here 
may sanctify us and make us strong in the faith of the gospel which St. Mark proclaimed. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. My dear friends, before the final blessing, I'd like to take a moment to express my thanks to all of you for joining us at this Holy Mass on the feast day of St. Mark the Evangelist. Tomorrow Mass will also be at 9 o'clock Eastern or 2 p.m. Nigerian time. Look forward to celebrating the Lord's Day with you tomorrow. As always, I'd like to end by reminding you that you are the delight of the Almighty God. God loves you very much. For our final hymn, we will sing the summons. The Lord be with you. The Almighty God bless and keep you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Will you come and follow me if I dare call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my name be known? Will you let my life be grown in you and you in me? Will you leave yourself behind if I dare call your name? Will you care for cruel and kind and never be the same? Will you risk the hostile state? Will your life attract us care? Will you let me answer prayers in you and you?